everybody, I hope you're doing well. The second most common question I get is about computer specs for music production. Mac or PC? What to look for in a CPU or in GPU and stuff like that. Fine, I'll tell you. If you haven't been here before, my name is Victor V, I run VictorV.com. I previously made the beginner's guide to music production where I told everybody that whatever they can get their hands on is pretty much enough to start making music digitally. That's true, and it has been the case for several years already. But what if the ability of just making music doesn't cut it? Or what if you're having large projects to work with so that you need all available power to throw at your problem? That's what we're going to talk about today. I am a big fan of evergreen content, so here's a line in the sand. I will not mention any specific products, because if you watch this video six months or a year from now, the landscape is going to be very different in terms of availability of these suggestions. So instead of that, I think it's more important to outline different rules of thumb to follow that can be later applied to whatever market you find yourself in. And before we start, if you like the idea of free music education, you can always throw me a couple of monthly coins on Patreon if you'd really like to. And Instagram is a great way to get into contact with me without relying on YouTube's notification system to suddenly work one day. Okay, we're having a lot to unpack here. I will divide this video into several chapters. CPU, RAM, storage and GPU. And before we begin, an important question. Does Mac versus PC debate matter? Yes. Mac computers, due to their closed nature, are way more stable than PCs. At the cost of repairability. Also, Mac and PCs approach RAM and CPUs somewhat differently, and I will address those in their relative chapters. Let's then get down to it and start with the CPU. For this one, I did something no human before me has ever done. I read the user manuals. If you don't know what a DAW is, it's a digital audio workstation. That's the mothership of all things music. If you scour the depths of Google, there's a lot of conflicting information about whether single core performance or multi core performance is preferred for music production, so I don't blame you for being all confused. Our CPUs are supposed to handle what's called digital signal processing, or DSP for short. It's all the sound manipulation from the moment it comes in to the moment it goes out. Depending on the complexity of the task at hand, the CPU load will then increase or decrease accordingly. This means that the DAW pretty much runs on a CPU alone. Of course, it gets some help from the RAM and its storage, but they don't even come close in terms of load. This is especially evident with power-hungry plugins like anything from Artoria. In fact, pretty much all emulation plugins are pretty heavy on the CPU side, and it can get overwhelmed pretty quickly if you just throw stuff at it with no regard to its capabilities. That being said, the CPU recommendations online drive me a little insane, as it seems that a lot of people who take it upon themselves to suggest things forget what grass looks like. To settle the debate once and for all, single core performance of your CPU is way more important than the amount of cores you can throw at your problem. Most not to say all, but most, audio processing cannot be done in parallel. It's instead a chain that requires the previous thing to be completed before the next one can start. There is an order to the process. Your DAW has to fetch the notes first, then the plugin that plays these notes, and then the effects stacked on top of it. You cannot run ahead of the traffic here. You don't buy a car and expect to drive it before you get the driver's license. Hopefully that's a clear example. So while well, yes, some plugins can benefit from multi-core performance. But if one core on your CPU is overloaded, it doesn't matter if you're running 32 of them. The audio will glitch. So bottom line is that a highly clocked CPU with a lesser core count will be more beneficial to you compared to having more cores that are clocked lower. And for those who wish to remain faithful to the old bit and apple, are Pro and Mac systems worth it? If solely for music production, it's unlikely. I've never seen even a base level M1 overload, let alone M2 or whatever's gonna come next. Next up, RAM. RAM is a touchy subject as far as audio is concerned, because it seems that nobody is really sure about what it does. I'm not calling anyone out specifically, all I'm saying is that sometimes the common threads under my posts are really funny to read. In audio production, RAM is responsible for response time, sample libraries, and crash preventions. It does more, but those three are the main things why we care. As the size of your project increases and the more instruments you throw in a timeline, the more your RAM requirements will rise. The amount of it you have available dictates not only whether all those things will load correctly, but also how fast you can switch between them, and most importantly, whether everything will crash and burn or not. This is especially true with power-hungry plugins. Well, well true that a lot of the work is done by the CPU, 
RAM is essentially there to make sure that nothing is hindering the CPU from performing its duties. Someday I'll snap and tell you about all those times I have lost unsaved progress because I refused to close my damn browser tabs with my 12 gigs of RAM. RAM is also super important when it comes to sample-based plugins. While synthesizers are purely emulation, sample-based stuff is more like an acoustic bass plugin. It's essentially a lot of samples that then get manipulated by your DAW. And sample-based instruments are everywhere, especially in something like contact libraries. Loading all those samples and keeping them in check is RAM's priority. Now, I've heard about latency being an issue on computers with low amounts of RAM, but truth be told, I cannot replicate it consistently to either prove or disprove that. I haven't ever had those kinds of problems, even on low-spec computers. Even when not using an audio interface, the latency was still just fine for me. So I'll throw it out there that that's something people complain about, but I've never been subjected to myself. So ultimately, crashing, freezing, loading libraries, all those are handled by your RAM. So it makes sense that, after the CPU, it's the most important thing to have a good experience creating music. For my Mac users, if you're running the Apple Arc systems, I've seen base level M1 computers performing just fine with 8 gigs of RAM. It's incredible how efficient those machines are. Should you get 8 gigs then? No. You could, you could, I'm not stopping you, but you might be sacrificing future performance. Just because it's fine now, doesn't mean that your requirements will not rise in the future, whether by hungrier plugins or a sheer size of projects you end up working on. So I do advise you to feature-proof your work and go for at least 16 gigs of RAM if you can afford it. For my PC friends, you're out of luck. 8 gigs will not get you anywhere. I've mentioned me currently having 12 gigs and there are plugins that will grind my computer to a halt. The sad reality of everything is that our PCs need a lot, lot more. 16 gigs is the absolute minimum, while 32 is something that I would say to be the sweet spot. Not much reason to go above that if you're purely music oriented, but if you're into video production and stuff like that, yes, in that case something like 64 gigs and above will be better suited for you. But 32 gigs will be enough for music production. We've had a 32 gig machine at our studio and it handled everything I ever threw at it, no problem. With that out of the way, I'm going to mention something I don't see mentioned very often, not to say at all. It's the clock speeds. I assume that a lot of you do more with your computers than just music, be it video editing, gaming, streaming, whatever. And you will often find high clocked RAM there for purposes of... Mm, I don't know. Does it matter here? Not really. In fact, having a high clock speed might even be more detrimental than anything because that RAM might be more unstable and that can be an issue in an environment like, like music that prioritizes stability. Bottom line is, it's not a big enough deal to worry about it too much. Okay, time to talk about storage. Storage is where we store our files. Crazy, right? Well, it's not as important as CPU or RAM. Bear with me, because there's still some things to address. The storage umbrella encompasses three main players in its field. Hard drives, SSDs, and NVMe drives. Hard drives are the slowest yet the cheapest option, and they allow for truly, truly high capacity. SSDs are much faster than hard drives, but are also more expensive. And NVMe drives are even faster and even more expensive. If looking strictly at the price-to-value ratio, hard drives are the absolute winner here. A terabyte of storage will run you for as little as 40 bucks. And you can get away with using a hard drive for your music production, that's absolutely fine. But I still would advise you to go for an SSD. Ah, interesting. That choice reduces itself to the read slash write speeds. Usually in music production what we do is we install our plugins and all the necessary software on the main drive and then all the libraries and samples those plugins require are offloaded to a different drive, often an external one you can carry around. You don't have to do that, but it's a common practice in order to simplify transitions from one computer to another without having to reinstall everything and redownload it. Same thing goes for the archival purposes. You do need to store and access all your projects, right? An SSD will save you seconds every time you do it, which doesn't seem much, but it adds up. That adds up to a significant amount over the course of days, weeks, or months. But that's not even the main reason I'd like you to have one. SSDs, compared to hard drives, are much more reliable and durable, and less prone to errors. Imagine losing months of your work because you cheaped out on storage. Totally didn't happen to me some years ago. All things considered, SSDs are more expensive than hard drives, but not much more so. They've been around for a decade, and the prices are very healthy now. 
I got a one terabyte drive for about, for about 80 bucks. But will you ever even fill up a one terabyte drive? Doubt it. Mine's not even half full, and that's considering all the libraries I got on it. And VME is even faster than SSD and even more expensive. Not talking about it too much because honestly, who cares? Not my PC audience, you are fine with an SSD. At least for music production. The only people I would advise getting an NVMe drive are those of you who'd want an external drive or Mac users. Ah, oh, the two categories overlap. Interesting. There is a way to DIY an external drive for extra 20 bucks or so, and if you want to do so, NVMe is uh, probably the best way to go. They're slim and very portable. All you MacBook people, that's the way to go for you. Don't pay Apple for extra storage with intention for storing everything there, because if your computer dies, so does everything else. You can go for an external SSD, but NVMe will allow for the most seamless experience compared to the internal drives you have. And it's light enough so that you can just tape it to the back side of your screen and you'll be fine, you'll never even notice it. Last but not least, please, for the love of what's holy, keep backups of everything. No solution is completely foolproof, and everything has the tendency to fail at one point or another. For archival purposes, I do like to keep my backups both in a cloud and uh, on an external hard drive. I have Velcro on it, so I tape it to the underside of my desk. Write and read speeds are arguably not important here, this is just long-term storage, even though I still do plan on turning that thing into an NVMe external drive. Now, last on our list is the GPU. It's last for a good reason, it matters the least. If we're talking strictly about music production, the choice of the GPU simply does not matter. But if I'm allowed to expand on that statement, it's unlikely that you're going to be doing just music production on your computer. Video and photo editing, gaming, whatever your hobbies are, I suggest you look into requirements for those and choose accordingly to your needs in that field. I just want you to know that music will not be impacted by that choice. The only use case that's slightly tangential to music that requires a GPU is uh, productivity. And by that I mean if you want to use a specific monitor or want to build a multi-monitor setup. In those cases you might need a dedicated GPU, yes. What GPU you need will be dictated by what you want to do exactly. But that's the only use case for a dedicated GPU that's even slightly related to to music production. And that's it ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully this video has been informative and I answered some of your questions. I tried to keep these answers as broad as possible so they still apply in the future, so if you're unsure about any specifics let me know in the comments and I'll try to answer that to the best of my abilities. As usual, if you enjoyed the video, click the like button, subscribe, my socials and Patreon are on the screen right now, and I will see you in the next video. My name is Victor V and I am out.